Yes, amen. We truly bless God. Amen. There it is. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. Blessings to you all tonight. Thank you all for the hearts on Instagram Live. It's a blessing to be here. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing and an honor. Amen. To be before all of God's people, um, especially on our prayer line tonight. We are on the call. Amen. Um, our prayer line tonight. Amen. Amen. Pastor Freeman, God bless you tonight. Inbox me, son. Amen. Let me know what you got going on in ministry. Amen. God bless you tonight on Instagram Live. Share the broadcast, if you will. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Instagram Live. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Facebook. Glory to God. All right. It says my um, connection is not good on here either. Y'all bear with me for one minute. Stay right there, Instagram Live. Amen. For some reason, my Wi-Fi is not connecting, but that's all right. Amen. We're going to try our best. <laughs> Amen. To get this word out. Glory to God. I need somebody to pray against technical difficulties. Amen. Because for some reason, both devices are messing up really bad. Amen. But there's a word of encouragement to the body of Christ tonight. Amen. Um, and I'm getting ready to encourage you all through the spirit of the Lord. But I want to say this tonight. Amen. Um, glory to God. Some of you are going to hear some devastating news um, from your family members. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but as God's prophet, um, he's been dealing with me. Amen. God has been dealing with me, um, and it doesn't have much to do with the pandemic per se, or any type of, um, uh, sickness in the land. Um, God revealed to me, he said, there are many people that are playing with him. They are playing with him. They are taking his grace and his mercy for granted. That's what God revealed to me in prayer. And I began to cry out for the church. You know, I began to pray. Amen. And ask God to have mercy. Ask God to hold back his hand. Amen. I asked God to, to hold back his wrath. Amen. And I went all the way in and began to pray and intercede for the church. And God began to speak to me. Excuse me. Amen. It looked like I had something on my nose. Um, the Lord began to speak to me and he said, many are playing with him. He said, many of my people are playing with me. And he said, what's happening now is, is causing those that are watching, um, who are now coming into the, the household of faith. Listen to this. He said, those who are watching and those who are babes in Christ are are watching how now those who are seasoned in the Lord, those who have been saved for a long time, right? He said they're watching their, their behavior. The Lord said that there are those that are just coming in and they're watching everything that we are doing. And I'm going to say we, cause I've been saved for a long time. Okay. Now, those of you that are saved and you're playing church, the Lord says he's giving you warning. Mm -hmm. I know this is not a popular live. He, he's giving you warning. Mm -hmm. Some of you have y'all not talking back to me, but I'm gonna keep on talking. Some of you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you know, God has been speaking to you and been correcting you in some areas of your life, but you refuse to change. It's quiet. I don't see no hearts. I don't hear no amens. You, you refuse to change. Mm hmm. Some of you are so stuck in your way. You refuse to change. Well, let me just tell you as God's prophet, the Lord says there are people that are watching you. Mm -hmm. There are many that are watching you. They're not just watching the fact that you post scripture. They're not just watching the fact that you might sing a song or two. They're not just watching the fact that you might preach the word of God because because they're going beyond that. Now, they people are looking. Y'all not talking back to me. He is, people are looking at your life. They are examining the fruit that you display, whether you're in the church or whether you're outside of the church. I know this is not popular. See, now, if I was prophesying houses, cars, babies, and weddings, then I know many of you will go ahead and share this live. But I, ne I need you to share it because this word has to get out. Hallelujah. My life belongs to the Lord. So because I have died, amen, for the cause of Christ, I don't care anymore. I'm a servant of the Lord. It, it really doesn't matter. And when I say that, I mean what I say and I say what I mean. It really doesn't matter anymore because so many prophets have lost their place in the kingdom because they refuse to speak what thus saith the Lord. So God is allowing them to still talk. Mm-hmm. 
but they're not prophesying what God is really saying. Ah, speak Holy Ghost tonight. We're going to get to the encouraging word in just a minute, but I have to lay the foundation because somebody that you know, their soul is in the balance. Maybe a family member, maybe a co-worker. It may be somebody that you fellowship with in church. So you need to tag that person in this broadcast because they need to hear this warning from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going to hear some bad, devastating news. People are going to drop like flies, literally. Listen, I've already prayed against it. I've already asked God to have mercy. Listen, I'm not speaking death on anyone. I am releasing what thus saith the Lord. God told me he is tired of his people playing with his name. He is tired of people taking his word and twisting his word. Glory to God. He said he is literally tired. I said, my God, my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, even for those of you, now listen to this. It goes real deep. He said, even for those of you who you have been ministering to certain people and they are not listening to you. Some of you have taken the time to pray for and pray with. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I got somebody's mail tonight because to the intercessor that has been interceding. Mm, glory to God. For those people who are stiff-necked. You've been praying for them, but they are stiff-necked. They are rebellious. God says, hold your peace. He said, because his judgment is coming quickly. Mm. All right. All right. He said, hold your peace because his judgment is coming quickly. Real quick. Real quick. Some of you before the week is out. Hi, you did your shot. You're going to hear what has happened. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Even before the month is out. Who glory. Hallelujah. You're going to hear what has happened to many people. My God, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. God said his judgment is in the land. Mm hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many of you need to get right so you can go home for real. Come on. Many of you need to get right with God. Listen, so many people feel like they have time to go to church and give their heart back to the Lord. You can do it right in the comfort of your home. Come on, because nowadays people are not going to church. Nowadays, people don't even care anymore if they step foot in the house of God. Hmm. There was a time where people couldn't wait till Sunday. There was a time people couldn't wait to go to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Listen, that hunger and thirst is still in my spirit. Glory to God. And I'm the pastor. Hallelujah. I am the pastor and I'm still eager and ready to go to the house of God. Not just to preach the word of God. Amen. But to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And to give back to God. Y'all not talking back to me. I asked my church and I asked a few of my members and I said, what is church to you? God has been dealing with me about that because many people don't really understand what church is. Many people don't really understand what church means. Come on. Come on. We don't just go to church to receive from God. He's not a genie. Come on. That, that's like, <laughs> listen, that, that's like going to, to a shelf and you got a genie on there and you go and rub his belly and you say, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. Can you give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's a genie. And many people come to, ah, you did your shot. Many people come to God like that. Like he's a genie. You going to rub his belly and he going to answer you. He going to respond to you. No, 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 no. We were created to worship him. Mm. We were created. Higher did the old shot. Hallelujah. To give back to him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We were created to worship together in the spirit of unity and in oneness. But what happens when there's no unity within the church? What happens when there's no unity in our homes? Y'all not talking back to me. What happens when there's no unity? Hallelujah. And we try to gather together. Glory to God. God can't move freely because there's no unity. Come on. There must first be unity. Hallelujah. And that's what happens. Amen. When we gather together. But see, if your mindset is not on God and if your mindset is not on giving back to God and worshiping God and pouring out everything that he has blessed you with, then what happens is you go to God and say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. 
I came to church today, God, what you got for me? I did what you told me to do. What you got for me? God, I need this. I need that. And he's saying, no, 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 no. I've given you breath in your body. Hey, Corey. He says, I've, a, I've, I've given you the activity of your limbs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He, he's saying, He's saying, I've given you everything that you need already, but what are you going to give back to me? Nobody comes to church to give back to God. <sighs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I asked a few people just, just the last couple weeks ago, what is church to you? And the answers to me are appalling, but you know, I mean, they just don't know. Come on, some some just do not know. But but when you wake up in the morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, that's the time to tell God, thank you. Glory to God. Because somebody didn't wake up in the morning. Hey, hallelujah, somebody died in their sleep. Glory to God. Hallelujah, we take life for granted. We feel like God is supposed to do this and God is supposed to do that. He's so wonderful. He's so big. He's so strong. He's so mighty. Yes, he is. But the Bible says the Lord giveth and the Lord takes away. See, we've conditioned ourselves to hear what we want to hear. We have conditioned ourselves to believe what we want to believe. Come on, many have, but y'all not talking back to me tonight. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Many have, have gotten to a place where they say, okay, long as I step foot in, I'm, I'm all right. Long as I get on the prayer line, I'm going to get my blessing. Come on, hallelujah. We have conditioned ourselves to say, God, as long as I come before you. Now, I'm not coming with anything, but I'm just going to come before you. As long as I come before you, God, you are entitled to give me everything that I ask for. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. Come on, come on. Somebody says, this is good to me. Somebody's being blessed on Instagram Live. Listen, hallelujah, the devil is a complete liar. Hallelujah. Sister Carmela says, I just lost somebody in their sleep. See? See, it's going to happen more often. I'm telling you all what I know through the spirit of God. God revealed it to me. He said, death is in the land. Some of you people that you know, they ain't even going to be sick. You just going to hear that they're no longer here. That's what God told me. I cried out to him. I cried out. I cried out yesterday. Today, I cried out to God. I said, Lord, have mercy. You know, because as his prophet, that is that is our requirement. The, the requirement of the prophet is not just to seek God for a word for the people. No, 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 no. No, the prophet is an intercessor. Glory to God. See, all prophets are intercessors, but not all intercessors are prophets. L let, me, let me run that by you again. <laughs> For those of you that are prophets, where's your prayer life? Where, where, where's, your, where's your prayer life? Where, where's your prayer life? Come on, if you lost it, pick it back up. Where's your prayer life, prophet? Come on. Come on, prophet, where's your prayer life? I want you to think about that for a minute. Glory to God. Let, let it sink in. I know, I know tonight is, is kind of hard tonight. It's, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's okay. It's all right. Because I promise you, if you take it in, you're going to grow. I promise you. Amen. God doesn't send forth a word to hurt us. He sends forth a word to help us. Glory to God. You may not hear this from your pastor. You may not hear this from your apostle. You may not hear this over the pulpit that where you fellowship. But you're hearing it tonight because God loves you. Somebody shout, God loves me. Come on, somebody write that tonight. God loves me. She says, you're the second prophet that I heard this week speak about people dying suddenly and not corona. There's confirmation. There's confirmation. And I don't need Cheryl, 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 Terry. I don't even, I don't even know we're friends on Facebook. So there's no way that I could have connected with her to even hear that. Glory to God. It is the Lord. Somebody shout, it is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is saying tonight, get right so that you can go home with him. He's saying, get right, get right, get right, get right with God. Hallelujah. And do it now. Get right with God. 
Hallelujah. And do it today. If you stealing, stop stealing. If you're lying, stop lying. If you fornicating, stop fornicating. If you committing adultery, you need to repent. Somebody shall sin is sin. Hallelujah. Come on. Sin is sin. If you backbiting, you gossiping and you just a busybody. Come on. Let's touch being a busybody tonight. Can we touch that tonight? That's a spirit that vexes my soul. Hallelujah. Being a busybody. You ever see people that just all over the place. They connecting to this person, connecting to that person, talking to this person, talking to that person here, there, everywhere, up, down, around. And you, and they're the main ones that's going through all the time. Can everybody hashtag busybody? Come on. Can, can you just hashtag busybody for me tonight? There's scripture and word where God says he don't want us to be busy bodies. Sometimes you got to quiet your spirit. So sometimes you got to get to a low place in God to where you humble yourself. Hallelujah. And in this walk, um, Sister Sequita, amen. I know God is dealing with you. In this walk, you're not going to have many friends. I don't know why we feel it in, in, in ministry and even in the house of God that we got to be connected to everybody. Ah, glory to God. If you look at the life of Jesus, the life of Jesus, he was by himself. Hallelujah. He had the responsibility. Blessings to you. I'm Apostle Darrell. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining tonight and grace in this live. God bless you. Jesus had the responsibility to teach the disciples. Glory to God. See, he had a requirement. Can I help somebody tonight? You can't eat with those that you're teaching. Y'all not. Listen, you cannot. Listen, listen, listen. I know they got a disco ball. I know they got a fellowship going on. And I know they got a dance and a boogaloo and all of that stuff. But you cannot. Hallelujah. My spiritual mother. Listen, my former pastor taught me this. She said, Carmen, you cannot sit with those that you about to prophesy to, hallelujah, and eat with. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Glory to God. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't sit in fellowship with people and have a nice little sandwich or eat some wings or, you know, and go out for a nice little dinner, some steak and potatoes. That doesn't mean that. Amen. Because you and that person are on one accord and you saying we're going to go down and we're going to break bread and we're going to eat a little bit of food. Hallelujah, but you can't fellowship. Oh, God, speak Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, you can't mingle with those that you're about to rebuke. Some of you want to be liked by everybody. The truth of the matter is, ain't nobody going to like you. Hey, hey, shut up. Hallelujah, before this life is over, let me tell you something. People are going to come in your life. And they're going to leave your life. Somebody shall get used to it. Come on. Glory to God. This is why I tell my members and my spiritual sons and daughters, don't get too close to me. Because there might come a time where mama got to back up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because I'm interceding for your soul. Hallelujah. Because your soul might be on the way to hell. Hallelujah. And I can't be mingling with you, texting you every day and going out with you and going to the mall. The devil is a liar. Come on here. Higher did your shot. Hallelujah. I might be home interceding for you. A God may tell me to stay in and shut in for your soul. See, people don't do that no more. Some of y'all love y'all bishops. Some of y'all love y'all so-called apostles and pastors, and they don't even pray for you. Glory to God, but you got a true prophet in your life, and you disgrace the, the true prophet. You dishonor the true prophet. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. God said he's going to hold you accountable for that. Glory to God. You know you got a true prophet in your life. And some of you sit there and you talk about the men of God. You talk about the women of God. And then you wonder why your blessing has been stagnated. Ah, glory to God. You wonder why there's a hold up on your blessing. Because you got your mouth on the prophet. Glory to God. Come on here. My grandmother taught me years ago when I was a little girl, about five or six years old. She said, Carmen, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. I said, Grandma, what you mean? I had to ask my grandma. I said, Grandma, what you talking about? She said, she said, Carmen, if you don't have nothing nice to say. I was a little girl. And my grandmother put that in me. God rest her soul. She said, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Woo. 
Glory to God. Who am I helping tonight? Because some of y'all talking and you're talking too much. And you're talking yourself out of the blessing. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're talking yourself out of your next miracle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is saying, can you be quiet for a season? Hey, so that I can work behind the scenes. He said, can you just shut up for a minute? Somebody say, did God say shut up? He sure did. Because sometimes we need to zip our lips. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you in this ministry and you a busybody, guess what? It's time for you to exit. Because the spirit of this ministry is not being a busybody. You don't see your pastor all over everywhere and inboxing everybody and trying to get everybody's number and trying to connect with this person and that person. The devil is a liar. I'm not a busybody. And I refuse to connect with everybody. Because everybody don't have the spirit of the Lord. Hey, glory to God. And that doesn't mean that I can't go minister, amen, and bring revival to that ministry or bring revival to that church. That's something different. There's a difference between the two. Come out here. Hallelujah. There was a time when Jesus was out there performing miracles. Listen to this. Jesus was performing miracles and he took the disciples with him. Did you see Jesus playing around? Come on, hallelujah. Jesus even got upset when they was in the temple selling the turtle doves and the doves was broken. They were selling all kinds of stuff that wasn't right. Come on, who am I helping tonight? And what did Jesus do? He went in there and turned them tables over. Ha, ah, glory. They said that was Jesus the apostle in action. Y'all not talking back to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, G oh, you did the old shot. Hallelujah. That was Jesus the apostle in action. I know they said he was just a prophet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That was that apostolic anointed resting heavy upon him. He went in that temple and said, this shall not be a den of thieves. He said, but my house shall be a house of prayer. Glory to God. That's what he said. And he meant it. And he went in there and turned over them tables and let them know what you are selling in the temple is not right. Woo! Glory to God. And some of you, that's what you're doing. You're selling the gospel. Hi, you did the old shot. Some of you are, I hear God tonight. Some of you are selling your soul. You are literally selling your soul. Some of you are compromising with the devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord allowed me to connect with a ministry last year. And all I seen was witches and warlocks. Listen to this, y'all. I seen nothing but witches and warlocks in this ministry. And I said, God, I know you ain't sent me to connect with this ministry. He said, I sent you to send my word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I sent you to send my word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I couldn't be fearful of what I saw. See, some of you see witches and you get afraid. Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. I see witches and warlocks all the time in Walmart, in the grocery store. I see them at the supermarket. They look at me and I look at them. And they look me up and down and I look them up and down. I say, how you doing? <laughs> Come on here. You got to let them witches and warlocks know I am not afraid of you. I see you though. Ah, glory to God. I see you. Ah, you did the old shot. See, that's when God gives you real power. Come on, somebody. Those of you that want to be ministers and you want to preach the word and you want to be in ministry and you want God to use you. God, use me for your glory. Some of y'all need to stop saying that because he really get ready to use you. And he's going to use you in a way that you never thought. Come on, because ministry looks glamorous, but behind the scenes, it's not. You talking about sleepless nights? Let me help some of y'all out that want to be pastors. Oh, it's anointing on my life to lead the people of God. Really? But can't nobody lead you? God called you to the nations, but you can't even prophesy over your community. God called you to the nations, but you can't even prophesy over your family members. Come on here. Ha! Ah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Most of my family Jehovah Witnesses, and you know what I tell them? You better call on Jesus before it's too late. You better call on Jesus before it's too late. They say, here she go again. I say, yeah, you ready? Are you ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior? That's what I say to my family. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you got Muslims in your family. You better start telling them about Jesus. 
Glory to God. Don't let them intimidate you because they got their chemar on and they come into you with, you know, all garbed up. Okay. Okay. I see your guard. But, but you better see Jesus. Come on here. Sister Maisha said that's at work. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Jesus is coming back, y'all. And see, you don't need a pulpit to preach. Come on. You got three minutes at that Walmart cash register while you standing there with that person. You got three good minutes. Look, now, I'm, now I'm helping y'all out because I used to be an evangelist. Listen to this. You have three good minutes to minister to a person that is not saved. You got three good minutes. Some of y'all God going to hold accountable. Come on. Some of you guys going to hold accountable. He going to say, who did you minister to? Who did you, who did you tell about me? Glory to God. Some of y'all waiting for the pastor to call you. Some of you waiting for your apostle to notice you. They may not ever notice you. Hallelujah. But God saw fit and God knows who you are. Oh, you did your shot. I haven't seen so many prophets in my life who are not prophesying the word of the Lord. Glory to God. How do you call yourself a prophet and you're not prophesying? Come on. I didn't say prophet lying to build an image. I said prophesying the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, that judgment is soon to come. You better get your house in order. Hallelujah, Jesus is soon to return. Get your house in order. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's soon to return. Get your house in order. Glory to God. Hallelujah, the sickness is not unto death, but you better get your house in order, Hezekiah. Ah, you did your shot. Hallelujah. And God said he will add more years to your life. Whatever happened with the prophets prophesying the word of God. That's how there's going to be quick manifestation. Come on here because God's word cannot return back void. But I see a lot of prophets that don't know the word of God. So I, I question that and I say, who is your teacher? I say, oh, Jesus taught me. I went to the school of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I got that part. But who's your mentor? Whose mantle do you have? Hiya, my shay. Glory to God. See, you have to have somebody's mantle. If not, you have come into this illegitimately. Woo! If not, you have come into ministry illegitimately, illegally. I know, I know a whole lot of enemies going to come after tonight. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Somebody hashtag, it's all right. Hey, shut up. Because I was born for this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, when I was a little girl, my daddy taught me how to fight. Come on here. Hallelujah. My daddy told me if you feel intimidated by somebody that's coming against you, you better fight them. Don't you back down to them. So when I was a little girl, I ain't had no problem with fighting. Now, that's not to say I won every fight, but I ain't give up. Come on here. So that was when I was in the world. Y'all not talking back to me. Come on, all 40 people, I need y'all to share this live tonight. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even if you was bigger than me. Hallelujah. I might have been intimidated, but you didn't know I was intimidated. Hey, Corey, you definitely didn't know I was intimidated. You might have been bigger in size, but guess what? I was sizing you up. <laughs> Thinking about where I was going to give you that two-piece. Y'all not talking back to the prophetess tonight. Glory to God. And so if I could fight in the world, y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. Many of you were fighters in the world. Now you in the kingdom and you just all, you know, I don't want to. You know, I know I see the devil over there. He, he, he throwing boulders at me. I know, you know, the devil over there, he running circles around my head. You know, I, I know, I know the enemy is working through this person. The enemy is working through that person. I know, I know I see it, but what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? Hallelujah. You better stand on Luke 10 and 19 when God says, behold, I've given unto you power. He said power to tread. Ha, ah, glory. Tread means to step upon. Woo, hallelujah. I said tread, Sister Deborah, means to step upon. He says, I've given you power to step on the enemy. Ah, glory to God. He says, I've given you power over the enemy. Mm. He said, you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
Who am I ministering to right here? Stop worrying about what the devil can do to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God because the price was already paid and you have what is called dominion. Can I get you the hashtag dominion tonight? Come on. Can I get you the hashtag dominion? Come on. Somebody shout, I have dominion over the enemy. Come on. Some of you, it's time for you to take back your power. Hallelujah. You got to take back your power. Take back your authority. You got to take back your life. Hallelujah. Who am I helping tonight? You got to take it back by force. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm, suffers violent, but the violent take it back by force. Come on. Somebody shout, I'm taking it back tonight. Glory to God. I'm taking it back tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. And some of you have given your power over to the enemy and what you have done, you've given it over to people. I hear the spirit of the Lord say it. Some of you have given your power over to people. Oh, glory to God. It's nothing like giving your power over to a person. Let me help somebody tonight. Glory to God. Next to you know, they start knocking you upside your head. Next to you know, they start taking all your money. Next thing you know, y'all not talking back to me tonight. Hallelujah. When you have given somebody your power, mm -hmm, somebody may say, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You, you might have given somebody your power. And guess what? You got to take it back now. Ha! Ah, glory to God. You can't be crying over a person. You can't be crying over what they did to you. You can't be crying over what they said to you. You got to take it back by force. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you, the enemy is using people to cause your demise. Glory to God. I hear the Lord saying some of you, the enemy is using people to get to you, to push your buttons. To make you feel less than. Glory to God. That's when you got to open your mouth and start speaking. I have the victory. Glory to God. Because you have the victory. Hey, shut up. I feel God moving right here. I feel God strengthening somebody right here. You have the victory. We just said it on the prayer line before we got on the live. You have the victory. You got to know you got the victory, but you got to stand on this word, people of God. Listen, hallelujah. It's one thing to wait for somebody to minister to you. I want to help about 12 of y'all. I want to help about 12 of you. Listen, it's one thing to wait for somebody to minister to your soul. But do you know you have at your, you have at your disposal 66 books of power? Hallelujah. And this is not just because I'm a pastor. Listen, I was born a prophet. Hallelujah. So I'm required by God to tell you to study his word. I'm required by God to tell you to go to his word. Because guess what's going to happen? When you read this word and you get the word in your spirit, even when you cannot fight. Mm, who am I helping tonight? Even when you cannot fight by yourself, glory to God, the Holy Spirit will come and he may use another prophet. He might use another vessel to minister that same word to you. Glory to God. But if you don't have no word inside of you, you don't have no power. Glory to God. We don't study the word to preach. We study the word of God. Amen. To get power in our spirit. Ah, glory to God. And if the Lord shall call you to minister his word, you got enough word inside of you. Hallelujah. You got enough word inside of you to spring out of you. Glory to God. See, I was taught in holiness and seeing true holiness. Let me just help somebody right here. Listen, the pastor said you're going to preach. They told you when you got to the church, you was going to preach. And they told you, put your Bible down, close your Bible, and you get up there and you preach the word of God. Hey, shut up. Hallelujah. That's where I came from. Glory to God. So the word was already inside of me. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Glory to God. See, Sister Linda, we don't study the word and see it now. I'm not against, you know, Bible school and all that. I went to theology school. I did all of that. I got degrees. I could put them up behind me. I can let you see the degrees that I have. I can tell you all the schools that I went to and all the diplomas I have and all the acknowledgments that I got. Glory to God. But what does that do? If the word, y'all not talking back. I feel God moving. I feel the Lord moving. This is a night of deliverance. This is a night of healing. Listen, hallelujah. If the word is not inside of me, guess what? Those letters kill the spirit. The Bible said, what did the apostle Paul say? He said, the letter killeth, but it's the spirit that brings life. Woo! 
Glory to God. I'm going to say that again till it ignites your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. The letter killeth, but it's the spirit that brings life. See, I can have a whole lot of letters in front of my name, behind my name. Y'all not talking back to me. Glory to God. I can have a whole lot of accomplishments, but what does that prove if I don't have the word of God in my spirit? Ah, glory. If I can't pray for you in the Holy Ghost, hey, shatan baha, hallelujah, and deliverance break forth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then what does it mean? Glory to God. See, we got titles. Who am I helping tonight? Everybody wants a title, but don't nobody want to do the works. Don't nobody want to get their hands dirty. Hallelujah. Don't nobody, ah, yabashe. They don't want to go get the fish. Hallelujah. And scale the fish and clean the fish out. See, that's the pastor's job. Glory to God. Don't nobody want to do that. They just want to be glamorous and just tell you where the money is. They want to tell you where the riches are. They want to tell you where the treasure is. They want to tell you how wonderful you are. Glory to God. But they don't want to tell you about your soul. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, before God used me, he delivered me. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Hallelujah. See, before God can really use you, he has to deliver you. Now, who wants to get delivered? Ah, glory. Now, if there was a prophecy line, let me help y'all tonight. If there was a prophecy line, everybody be standing in that. But if it was a deliverance line, y'all not talking back to me. If it was a deliverance line, how many of you were really standing in that line? Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you come into a deliverance ministry, deliverance is going to fall. So you have no choice but to get delivered. If you're ready. But see, a lot of ministries are not deliverance ministries. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the prophet is supposed to carry the mantle of deliverance. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. A true prophet. Hallelujah. Did the old shot. Carries the mantle of deliverance. Come on. Can you pray me out of some stuff? Don't tell me you're a prophet if you can't pray me out of some stuff. Glory to God. I'm sick in my body. You telling me how rich I'm going to be. No, I need healing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, we've got this thing mixed up. See, the prophet is supposed to be able to see if you need healing or not. Woo, glory. The prophet is supposed to be able to see if you need to be delivered or not. Mm, glory to God. The prophet is supposed to be able to see if you need to be set free. Not where your husband is if you're a woman or where your wife is if you're a man. See, all of that stuff will come after you obey God. After you align yourself with God. I see so many people say now, they say, prophet, you know, I'm waiting for my God-ordained spouse. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you obedient to God? Because if you're looking for your God-ordained spouse, listen to this. Now, God can send anybody in your life. But if he going to send you his best, if God is going to, listen, y'all need to talk back to me on this. If God is going to send you his best, then that means you need to be in alignment with him. Because you can marry anybody. But if you want God's best, you got to be. And you got to wait. <laughs> Come on, Carmela. Hallelujah. And you have to learn to wait on God. Because it's not going to happen overnight. Come on here. Hallelujah. And why do we want overnight blessings anyway? Woo, glory. Why do we want stuff overnight anyway? Hallelujah. See, I'd rather have something that's good and baked. Listen, I know it's right. It's going to last a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout substance. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, that's what you need to ask God for. Lord, send me some substance. Mm. Woo. That was good right there. I felt a release for somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, send me something with substance. Hallelujah. And it don't have to just be a person. Listen, because God can send you a business that's full of substance. Come on. He, he can, y'all not talking back to me. He can send you to a ministry that's full of substance. Amen. Come on. You got to get to the point to where now you want substance. Glory to God. What is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Somebody shout substance. Somebody shout substance. Come on. Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Somebody shout substance. 
Come on. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Through the word of God. Now faith. Come on. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance. Somebody show substance. Come on. We're we, we going to break this word down. Because mm -hmm. somebody going to get the revelation real quick. Because your faith is really substance. Ah, glory to God. And if you don't have no faith, then you don't have no substance. Speak Holy Ghost. See, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And the evidence of things not seen. Come on. Hallelujah. Catch this revelation real quick. And so now faith, somebody shout now faith, uh-huh, is the substance. Yeah, it's the weight of, the weight of, the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T. Hallelujah. It's the weight of something. Glory to God. Somebody's going to get some substance after tonight. God's going to give you some real good substance. Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Somebody may say, well, prophet is, how can I, how can I hope for something that I have not seen yet? Mm. See that word seen, let me help somebody. That word seen means you have not seen it yet with the natural eye, but you've seen it in the spirit. Oh, glory to God. That's for seven of you. I just heard seven. Hallelujah. That's for seven of you. You have seen something in the spirit. God has given you a vision of something. Ah, speak Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. And because he has given you a vision of something, now you got to hold on by faith. Come on. You got to hold on by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. You got to hold on by faith. Glory to God. You got to hold on by faith. Somebody shout, I'm holding on by faith. Glory to God. And I preached Sunday, amen, amen, a message on faith, faith over fear. Amen. I didn't get to give the acronym, but I'm going to give you the acronym for faith. Can I give you the prophetic acronym for faith tonight? Hallelujah. The acronym for faith is forwarding all issues to heaven. Glory to God. Forwarding all issues to heaven. Hallelujah. That is the acronym for faith. You're forwarding all your issues to heaven. You're giving it over to God. Hallelujah. But you're giving it over by faith. Woo, who am I helping tonight? Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm looking at faith totally different now. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight now. I'm not going to worry about my situation. I'm not going to worry about who's in front of me. I'm not going to worry about who's doubting me. I'm not, oh, yeah, by shay. I'm not going to worry about anything that's negative in my life. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody shout now faith is the substance. Come on. Every time you hear that now, you're going to get a little bit more. Hallelujah. From the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God going to give you a little bit more every time you read Hebrews 11 and 1. And guess what's going to happen? Your faith is going to increase in God a little bit more. Somebody shout just a little bit more. Hallelujah. We serve a God of progression. We serve a God of, of, of um elevation. We serve a God of more than enough. We serve a God of overflow. We serve the God of increase. Amen. God is always moving. Hallelujah. I say God is always moving. Come on, Instagram live. Y'all talk back to me tonight. So for those of you that may be stuck or stagnated, that's because you need God in your life. Can I help you tonight? You may say, well, prophetess, I know him. You may know him, but is he moving for you? Come on. You may know God, but is he really in your life? Come on, now I can tie my message in tonight. Amen. I can tie this message in right here because many of you need to hear this right here. Just stay with me about 10 more minutes, y'all. Glory to God. I thank God for the leaders that are on this broadcast. Amen. I thank God for every apostle, every pastor, every bishop. Amen. Every evangelist, every teacher that is on this live tonight. I thank God for the fivefold ministry. I am honored to, to minister to you tonight. Amen. And I give honor to whom honor is due. Glory to God. So every leader in the body of Christ, I honor you tonight. Amen. I know you on my live. <laughs> Glory to God. But I am honored to pour into your life. Amen. I know that God has called me to his leaders. Amen. I know my lane. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I first started prophesying, he sent me to pastors. Glory to God. The Lord sent me to apostles. I was prophesying in my first two years of my prophetic walk. And he sent me to leaders so I know the vein that I walk in. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He sent me to leaders. He sent me to apostles and bishops that needed help, that needed deliverance. Glory to God. That needed to hear a true word from the Lord to stay on track and to stay focused. 
Hallelujah. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So the Lord says, stay focused and remain faithful to him. Glory to God. Stay focused and remain faithful to him. Hallelujah. The viewers are dropping, but that's okay. And then I need you all to click that share button one more time. Amen. Stay focused and remain faithful to him. Hallelujah. Carmela says, I took some good notes tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Anytime you join woman of God, amen. Take as many notes that you can and go back. Amen. Go back and read them. All right. Glory to God. Amen. God says, stay focused on your purpose to pursue the promise. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me to tell you. He said, remain focused on your purpose to pursue the promise. Come on. Has God made anybody a promise tonight? Come on. If God has made you a promise, I want you to put that hand emoji, that lifting up your hand. Amen. I want you to put that emoji on, on the screen tonight. Can you do that for me? Hallelujah. If God has made you a promise, hallelujah, and you are waiting on the promise, glory to God. I want you to just put that lifted hand emoji. Can you do that for me tonight? Hallelujah. He said, I need you to stay focused. He says, stay focused on your purpose. Amen. If you don't know your purpose tonight, I want you to pray for the next three days. This is your prayer assignment. If you don't know your purpose in the earth realm, I want you to pray for the next three days. This is, this is the instruction that God gave me to give to you. Pray for the next three days. And within the next three days, he's going to reveal to you your purpose. Amen. Those of you that really pray, amen. Glory to God. And you go all the way in. Hallelujah. Every time you think of praying, every time you, you get, you get the unction to pray, ask God to reveal, to reveal to you his purpose. All right. That's the first thing. So he says, focus on your purpose. Now, those of you that know your purpose, thank you, mercy. God bless you tonight. Amen. He says, those of you that know your purpose, he says, now it's time to pursue. Glory to God. I'm going to slow walk this. Amen. I'm not going to preach. I'm, I'm going to slow walk this tonight because it's very important that you understand, number one, your purpose, and you understand what it means to pursue. All right. Glory to God. Let me give you an example first, and I'm going to give you a definition. Now, when a man is attracted to a woman, he does what is called pursuing her. He pursues her, right? That's the nature of a man, to pursue a woman. Now, women, you don't pursue the man. The men pursue you, <laughs> all right? To the single ladies, let me help you out tonight. Amen. The man is to pursue you. I'm giving an example here, okay, of the definition pursue, right? That's right, Sister Deborah. My purpose, yes, ask the Lord, what is your purpose, all right, some of you going to come back with testimonies after tonight. You're going to come back next week and say, prophetess, I got a testimony. She says, I don't know what purpose is, so I'm praying. Amen. You don't know your purpose. That's right, Carmela. The Lord told me that some of you were going to be on this live and you don't know your purpose. And then there's some of you that know your purpose, but now it's time to pursue. All right, you're going to go to a deeper level of pursue, pursuing. Let me give you the definition here. All right. So pursue, now this, this is another term, but somebody could take this also. Pursue means to follow in order to catch or to attack them, right? So that's kind of like in an army, you know, that's in a war setting. You know, you pursue your enemy, so you watch them so that you can now attack them, all right? So that means to do what? Keep your eyes open, right? It means to go after. It means to run after. Uh, pursue means to follow, OK, now I gave you all the example of how a man, if he's interested in a woman, he will watch her until he can finally pursue her. OK, and a lot of times men don't give up if they really want what they want. They'll, they'll, they'll stay. They'll stay focused. Right. Amen. Because that man's job is to pursue the woman. And I'm giving you this example so that you can get into your spirit. OK, so you can understand. All right. Amen. Another definition. You got it, Sister Maisha? Awesome. Awesome. Another definition of pursue means to follow in order to overtake. Okay? To follow in order to overtake. It also means to capture. 
right? Pursue also means to chase. Okay, so now this is the season for those of you that know your purpose. Listen to this. Now it's time for you to pursue what it is that God has told you to do. All right. Now you have to chase after it. You got to chase after the vision. Come on. This is real good. So now it's time for you to do something. You have to put it in motion. Now you can't sit back and say, I know what God told me to do, but I'm going to wait another year to do it. Mm mm. No, no, you have to pursue now. You got to pursue your purpose. All right. Come on. Stay with me. Pursue also means um, to strike. I'm sorry, to strive to gain. All right. To strive to gain. So that means you do whatever it takes to gain in this season. All right. No more loss. No more loss. Somebody shout. I'm not losing anything else. Come on, encourage yourself in the Lord. Prophesy over your destiny. You're not going to lose another thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not going to lose another thing. Glory to God. Hey, shut up. I feel that for many of you tonight. You're not going to lose another thing. You're not even going to lose your joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God has restored your joy. Mm. Hallelujah. You're not going to lose any more love. Some of you have given your love to people who have taken your love for granted. Come on. Come on. And you have found yourself getting hurt. Hallelujah. Now is the time for you to say no more. No more. No more. No more. You're not going to lose again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a word for many of you because you have sold yourself short. Hmm. We're going to stay right here for a minute. Some of you have given your time to people who didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Some of you have given your love to people who don't deserve it. Some of you have given your money to people who don't deserve it. Mm, I hear God tonight. Hallelujah. Make that declaration in your life. No more. No more. No more. And see, in order for you to walk in no more, listen to this, you have to know your value. Come on, my sisters. Come on, my brothers. Glory to God. You have to know your value. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, you're anointed. Yes, you're called by God. But do you know your value? Hallelujah. Because when you know your value, you can tell the devil no. When you know your value, you can walk in dominion. Ah, glory to God. But when you don't know your value, you'll say yes to anything. You'll say yes to anybody. Glory to God. Because you now want what is called opportunities. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why you got to watch those who have been rejected. Glory to God. See, a person who has been rejected. Let me help you, Yolanda. A person who has been rejected over and over and over again. They want what is called acceptance. Come on. Hallelujah. God bless you, Karen, tonight, woman of God. They want what is called acceptance. Come on. Hallelujah. And even as God's vessel, as God's prophet, as God's apostle, as God's man, as God's woman, you have to get to a place where you don't really care if they accept you or not. Come on. Who am I helping tonight? Who am I helping tonight? Come on. Because you got to get over this season of want to be, wanting to be accepted. Ah, glory to God. I stopped after my mom died last year. I was tired, Pastor. Wow. It's all right, because you're going to get back, back to your place of strength, Sister Renee. Hallelujah. I prophesy in the name of Jesus mm -hmm, that you get back to your place of strength in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. That God will strengthen you to the place that you were in before in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare it to be so. And it is so in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sister Renee. Hallelujah. And so God is saying it's time to pursue. All right. Focus on your purpose to pursue the promise. You got that, Apostle Blake? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It would have been a blessing if you could have came out to our revival this, this weekend. 
Amen. If you're available Friday, um, Apostle Blake, or Saturday, I don't know what day you worship, but let me know. Amen. Glory to God. Even if you can make it to one of these nights, hallelujah, for this prophetic revival, Fresh Fire 9, Apostle Blake, can you inbox me and let me know? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Amen. We'd love for you to come and fellowship with us, Apostle Blake. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So what is focus? What is focus? Focus is the center of interest or activity. All right. Focus means the center of interest. So you know how you're interested in something, but you're really like focused on it. You're like, you know what? I got to have that. Or you know what? I have to accomplish that. You know what? I need that. Right? So, so now you're focused on it. Ah, glory to God. See, see, when you lose focus of something, can I help you in the Holy Ghost? When you lose focus of God, I want to help about 12 of you tonight. What happens is you get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. When you lose focus in God, amen, and your focus is not on the Lord anymore. Even as the psalmist said, I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from God who made the heavens and the earth, right? The psalmist said that because he realized at one time, come on, those of you on Instagram, he realized at one time he was focused on the Lord and things were working in his life. Oh, this is a word for somebody tonight. I feel somebody coming out of a pit tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and so the psalmist realized, he said, listen, I will look unto the hill. Mm. He made it personal. Amen. He said, I will look unto the hill from which cometh my help. Glory to God. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Ah, oh, glory to God. Nobody can help you the way that God can. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again for the Holy Ghost. Nobody can help you the way that God can. Come on. Glory to God. David said what? He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. He said, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Ah, glory to God. Somebody needs to say that. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. No matter what I'm going through, no matter the storm, the situation, Sister Shana, hallelujah. No matter who is telling you, hallelujah, opposite of what God told you, glory to God. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Ha, ah, glory. That means at all times, God is good. And God is good all the time. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 No matter the situation, no matter the storm, no matter the test. No matter the trial, God is still good, Prophet Chanel. Come on here. Hallelujah. It's time for you to come out of that place. Higher did your shot. Come on, Prophet Chanel. It's time for you to come out of that place. I hear the Lord saying, I don't know the place that you're in, but God said for me to tell you, Prophet Chanel, it's time for you to come out of that place. It's time for you to come out. It's time for you to come out. <laughs> Glory to God. God has already told you that. But it's time now, Prophet Chanel, for you to come out of that place. Mm -hmm. The Lord says for me to tell you tonight to come out. It's time for you to come out of that place. Yeah. No more bondage. Hallelujah. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. Ah, Glory to God. See, when you are bound up and you're not free, you can't flow. Come on here. See, see, when you're bound up, <laughs> speak Holy Ghost. When you are bound up, ah, glory to God. And, and, and then people got you bound to the point to where you're not free. You can't move. Your arms is shackled. Your legs is shackled. God says, daughter, it's time for you to come out of that place. I don't know, but God does. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise. Hiya by shake. Because we serve a God who can break and destroy every shackle. Oh, glory to God. And he knows. Hiya did the old shot. Because he has called you, Prophet Chanel. Glory to God. You don't belong to man. You don't belong to woman. You belong to God. Mm, 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 mm. My God, my God. Now, don't you get in trouble with God now. 
Oh, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. Don't you get in trouble with God. Because see, as his prophet, if you don't obey the first time, and he got to send somebody to tell you the second time, and then he got to send somebody to tell you the third time. Come on. Now we get in disobedience, and you know, God got a way of, you know, chastising us, and it don't feel too good. Come on here. See, prophets, we get whooped a little harder than some of y'all. All right, we're going to leave that alone. I know you're going to obey Prophetess Chanel. Amen. Because you hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. But he wants you to be free because he has need of you. It's like your ministry. Something happened and you're like, I see a lid on your ministry, um, Prophetess Chanel. I, I see. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It's like a lid on your ministry. It's like a lid over your mouth. It's something over your mouth to where you can only speak at certain times and you can only say certain things. Mm. Woo. Glory to God. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your life belongs to the Lord. Your mouth belongs to God. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I speak freedom over you. I speak freedom over your ministry. I speak freedom in the name of Jesus, glory to God. No more restrictions. Mm. No more restrictions, Prophet Chanel. In the name of Jesus, no more restrictions. Hey, shut up. Mm. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Glory, glory, glory. You're going to get your praise back also. The enemy has been muzzling your praise. Mm -hmm. He's even been muzzling even your dance. Mm -hmm. You've been restricted. See, we don't understand how when people have us restricted. I'm helping somebody else tonight. This is a word for somebody else. When people have you restricted, we shifting right here. Let's stay here. When people have you restricted, what happens is you, you become bound up. Listen, you become bound up. And when you become bound up, you're no longer free. And so where there's no freedom in your mind, she says, I receive it. Amen. In your mind, what happens is you're, you're restricted to the point to where you want to say something. It's kind of like, yes, Lord, I hear you. He says, give this example. It's kind of like a wounded child. You know, a child that has been abused. And I don't know why we go in here tonight. God wants to heal somebody. It's like a child that has been abused and yes, Lord, I hear you. God is saying, go right here because somebody's going to be healed tonight. And you know, that child is told not to say anything. Mm. A child that has been abused, the abuser tells them, don't say anything. Don't tell nobody what is happening to you. Come on. See, and the way that I know is because my mother taught me when I was a little girl. She said, there are no secrets. She said, if somebody comes up and tells you this is our secret, she said, you come and you tell me. I didn't understand what my mom was saying, but I did what she told me to do. Nobody came and said, this is our secret, but she's always asked me that question when I was a little girl. Come on. We're going somewhere tonight. Hallelujah. Because anytime you have been abused, the abuser wants to cover it up. They don't want you to be free. So they'll tell you, don't say anything. They'll tell you, mm -mm. and a lot of times they'll make it seem like it's your fault. Come on, prophet. It should know you coming out of that. Glory to God, because nothing that you have done is your fault. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a word for many of you tonight. Get your healing tonight. Come on, just lift your hands and tell God, thank you. I may not ever see you in the, in the natural, but God is speaking to you spiritually. He is hitting right now that point that needs to be hit in your life. Glory to God. That's going to bring forth a healing. In the name of Jesus. See one thing. Yes, Lord, I hear you. One thing the enemy does, those who have been abused in their childhood or in their teenage years, what the enemy does, now you're saved. But listen to this. What the enemy does is now that you are, are an adult, he uses that same technique. He uses that same thing to make you feel bound. Mm. This is not just for women. I hear the Lord saying this for two men that are watching tonight. Glory to God because you were abused. 
I hear the Lord saying this is not just for the women tonight. There are two men that are watching that may not have ever commented. You may not have even said anything on this live tonight, but you can hear me very clearly. The Lord says he's healing you tonight because what you're going to do now is open your mouth. Mm. Hallelujah. You're going to open your mouth and what you're going to do is speak your truth. Hmm. Hallelujah. You may be grown. You may be fully grown. An adult, adult, 40s and your 50s. Glory to God. And maybe somebody in their 30s, you have not ever told what happened. Hallelujah. You are going to open your mouth and tell your truth. Because mm. God wants you free. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be free. Somebody you're releasing right now. The tears are falling. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I have to get to you very soon, Pastor. Yes. Yes. You can inbox me, Prophet Chanel. Glory to God. Somebody's being healed right now. This is serious. It's deep too. It's real deep because you have not told anyone. And somebody you have told somebody, the Lord says there's one person that has not told anybody. You have not said anything and you have held that in all of your life. But then there's somebody you have told your truth and nobody listened to you. God is healing you tonight. Mm hmm. Let's just stay right here for about 30 more seconds. Glory to God. If that's you tonight, just tell the Lord, thank you. You don't have to write it on a live. Amen. Because it's something between you and God. Hallelujah. It is between you and the Lord. Amen. And let God do it. Amen. Let him heal you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And it may even be someone also that's going to watch the replay. Yes, God, I hear you. Somebody that's going to watch the broadcast. Mm -hmm. They're going to get their healing instantly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to, we're going to get back into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some worship. Come on. Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Sometimes when God is moving, amen, we cannot rush his spirit. Amen. We have to stay right here. So if that's you tonight, just lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Mm-hmm. One thing that happens when you have been abused as a child or in your teenage years or even your young adult years and you have not released that, um, it can cause you to become an abuser or to really cry within yourself. It's like you're screaming inside um, and nobody hears the scream. It's like you know that you're screaming, your insides are crying out, but nobody around you can hear the scream. Nobody knows that you are in pain. Hallelujah. And so you mask it. You won't say anything. You know, you may even try to express yourself um, with other people, but there's limitations because of the abuse. Who am I helping tonight? Hallelujah. Let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I lift up every person right now under the sound of my voice that is dealing with this issue right now. Father, I pray that you would heal their heart, that you would heal their mind, and that you would heal their spirit. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, even from the abuse, Lord God, even the memory of the abuse, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would deliver their soul, that you would set them free, Lord God, and that you would remind them it was not their fault. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will not hold themselves accountable 
for what has happened to them, Father, but that they will release it on tonight. Oh, God, and that they will give it over to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, so that you can set them free once and for all in Jesus' mighty name. So that, Father, they will know their purpose. Ah, glory. And that they will pursue their purpose, oh, God. And that their promise will come to pass. The promise that you have made unto them. There will be no restrictions on the promise, Father. There will be no hindrance even concerning their purpose, oh God. Because you are delivering them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we praise you now, God. Oh God, let your healing run deep tonight. Let your healing power run deep on tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Hey, Shata. Oh God, deliver. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God, deliver their soul tonight, Father. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Even every spirit of perversion, every spirit of lust. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will set them free for your glory. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you right now, God. And we count it done in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus Christ. And it is so. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel such a strong healing anointed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. Mm. For God has come to set you free tonight. In Jesus' name. And it is so. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we're talking about focus, I got to get this word all the way out. So focus means, amen, the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. All right? Clear visual definition. So when we have clear vision... We're able to define what is in front of us. Let me just say that again. When we have clear vision, we're able to define what is in front of us. We can identify it, right? When you have clear vision, which means you are focused, okay? So the opposite of focus is having blurred vision, all right? So if we're not focused, let me give you the other side of it. If, if, you're, if we're not focused, our vision is blurry, right? We cannot see, we cannot discern, you know, properly. All right. But when we're focused, God will give us clear vision. You got that prophetess Tina? Amen. It means to pay particular attention to, it means to adjust one's eyes to a particular range. All right. So when you're focused on something, you realize how deep you got to go in to see it. <laughs> All right. If you ever focus on something and you squint your eyes and you like, or you might say, let me put my glasses on <laughs> so I can see this. Right. It means also to concentrate on. It means to think about it. So when you're focused on something, you're thinking about it. You're talking about it. You know, you're going to God concerning it because it's your purpose. So now you're focused on it. Right. It means to deal with it also. Okay, Shirai says you're helping me pass it to God be the glory. It means to deal with it, all right? So when you're focused on your purpose, you put it in action. You put it in motion, Evangelist Arlene, right? Amen. Glory to God. And so the Lord took me to Nehemiah. Let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3, all right? Amen. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3. We're going to turn it real quick. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, please turn with me. Glory to God. Nehemiah. Amen. I know exactly where it is, but we're going to do it like this tonight. Glory to God. Come on, Nehemiah. All right. Amen. Nehemiah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Y'all know the story of Nehemiah, right? What did Nehemiah do? Amen. Nehemiah had the responsibility to build the wall, right? Glory to God. He had a great responsibility. Somebody shout great responsibility. Hallelujah. That's just like many of you. Amen. Your purpose is great. Glory to God. Your purpose is great. Somebody shout, my purpose is great. 
Amen. Thank you, Sister Sequita. Amen. I'm going to pin that um, down there for those who desire to sow into this word tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3. Can y'all turn there real quick? That's why right. he built the wall. That's why. Right. That's why, right, Sister Kashina. That's why right. he had the responsibility to build. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, we are excited about our revival, you all. Okay, here we are. Amen. This weekend, just in two short days. Amen. We got Thursday and Friday. The kickoff is Friday, Friday night at 7.30. Amen. Apostle Antron Taylor, he's going to take us all the way in. Glory to God. Carmela says, what chapter? Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3. All right. <laughs> Amen. Turn with that. Turn to that scripture for me, you all. Those of you that can, she says, I got it. Awesome. Okay. He says, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should I, why should the work cease while I leave it and come down unto you? So he's asking the people the question. He's saying, wait a minute, I'm building right now. I'm doing a great work and you want me to come down for you. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I can't do that. <laughs> Glory to God. There's Apostle Antrell. God bless you, man of God. We look forward to seeing you. We are excited in the Lord. Amen. What God is going to do on Friday night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying for you. Amen. And we're, we are waiting for your arrival. Amen. At Fresh Fire 9 Revival. God bless you, Apostle and, uh, <laughs> and Trail. Amen. I'm excited. I'm getting tongue-tied. Amen. Glory to God. God's going to do something amazing, y'all. Listen, I say he's going to walk through North Carolina. And some of y'all caught that in the spirit. Amen. There's about to be an eruption in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Prophetic explosion. Glory to God at the Ezra Center. My God, my God. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do something amazing. He's getting ready to walk through Raleigh, North Carolina, literally. Somebody going to catch that in a minute. And his feet are big, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's feet are not small. Hey, shut up. He's getting ready to walk through. See, I, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta calm down. See, Minister Tanya, listen. Because, uh, you know, we started talking about Fresh Fire Revival Holy Ghost get the, you know, moving and stuff. All right. Amen. Let's stay focused because somebody needs to hear this about building. All right. So, so Nehemiah told the men, he said, listen, he said, I sent, he said, I sent messages to tell them. He said, listen, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say this message. He says, I am doing a great work. Somebody shout, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Listen, he's doing such a great work in building and he's doing what God had told him to do. He told the people, I can't come down. See, that's a word for many of you. People around you are telling you, stop what you're doing. Why are you doing all that? It don't take all that. And you're saying, wait a minute. It takes all of that and some. I got to continue to build because it's not about me. Somebody shout, it's not about me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you realize it's not about you. Amen. And it's one host and seven participants. Amen. When you realize... Amen. I, I know some callers on the line. We got seven callers. Amen. Callers, stay right there, y'all. Glory to God. Amen. When you're doing a great work for God, you realize, right? Come on, Joya. You realize that it's not about you. Amen. And so just like Nehemiah said, I can't come down for nobody. If I come down off of this wall, that means I'm going to stop building. If I come down, that means I'm not going to be focused again. Right? That's our word tonight. Stay focused. All right? Hallelujah. Stay focused. Amen. Stay focused and remain faithful to God. All right. Proverbs chapter 16, verse three says what? Commit thy ways to the Lord and your plans will be established. All right. Commit your ways to the Lord. Everything that you do, commit it to God. Amen. Glory to God. And what commit means to remain, be unresponsible. Anything you commit to, amen, it becomes your responsibility. You're saying, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it well. Amen. So God says, commit your ways to him and your plans will be established. Somebody shout sure foundation because that's what that means. When our plans are established, God gives us a sure foundation. Our foundation is not rocky. Our foundation is not up and down. 
when, when God gives you a strong foundation, it's secure. Hallelujah. A storm can come. Hallelujah. The winds can blow. But if you got a strong foundation, glory to God, you won't waver. Hallelujah. You won't be tossed to and fro. Glory to God. You will remain strong in the Lord. That's right. Strong foundation, right? When you are established, okay? Somebody shout, establish me, Lord. There's somebody tonight, you need to be established. And some of you re-establish. It's okay. It's okay if you've lost your place. It's all right. Amen. Just ask God to establish you. Ask God to re-establish you. Re means to do over. All right. That's a word for about five of you tonight. I hear the Lord saying five. There's five of you that need to be re-established. All right. You need your foundation back. It's okay. It's okay. God's going to do it for you. Amen. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. I love verse 1, but we're just going to read verse 2 for tonight. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's turn there real quick. Let's turn there real quick tonight. I'm excited about this revival, y'all. Listen, and I don't, listen, I think it's been about five years that I have not ministered the week of our conference. So I know this is God. Amen. He told me to come on and release this word. So I'm being obedient to him because I'm usually, my spirit is quiet. Amen. Um, the week of the conference, but I know somebody needed this word. Amen. We're in a time now. Let me just say this. We are in a time now where so many people need the word of God. We're in a time now people don't have a shepherd. They don't have a leader. People are not even a part of a church anymore. Amen. So they need the word of God, you know. And so we thank God for this ministry that we are here every Monday, every Wednesday. Amen. And some Saturdays. Amen. We are here on this live. So we bless the Lord. Amen. For those of you that come and are fed. Amen. The word of God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Somebody give God some praise for the ministry. Amen. Anybody grateful for the ministry? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. All right. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. He says, and be not conform. So conform means to gravitate to. Conform, when you conform to something, you become it. So if it's not right and you around it and you around it and you partake of it and you around it and you partake of it and it's not right, you have conformed to it. All right. And usually that's how sin works. You know, sin starts out real small and then it, you know, it magnifies and magnifies and magnifies. And before you know it, you're deep in sin and you're like, how did I get here? Right. So God is saying it in Romans 12 and two, he's saying, and be not conformed. Don't conform to the world. In other words, the world might be doing something. Guess what? You don't do it. Come on. Try to refrain from that. Come on. I'm talking to the young people also because the young people have it very hard now. Amen. Our young people don't have it easy. Glory to God. Amen. Our young people don't have it easy. Let me just encourage the young people if you're on this live tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, young people, stick with God. Stay with God. If you have people in your family that have a relationship with God, ask them about the Bible. Ask them to pray for you. Use your resources because the devil is not playing fair. All right. That's for all the young people that are listening under the sound of my voice tonight who can hear me very clearly. All right. Young people, you have resources. Don't let the devil beat you up. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're nothing, that you're worthless and that you have to you have to um, conform to him. Mm -mm. No, you can be saved and live a saved life. That's to the young people. Amen. So parents encourage your children to live a holy life. Amen. Encourage them to live a life that's pleasing unto God. I don't know any parent that wants their child to die and go to hell. I'm the pastor that, that's going to say what most pastors won't say. I'm just being real. I, I don't know any person in their right mind, any parent, any um, father, any uh, mother. Y'all not talking back to me. Y'all just looking at me. It's 33 viewers. Nobody's saying anything. You want your kids to go to hell? Something to think about, right? So every chance you get, you love on them. 
Every chance you get, you tell them that God is real. Every chance that you get, you tell them live for God. Listen, I tell my children all the time. Listen, I know you love me, but love God more than you love me. Now that's real. That's real. I tell my children that all the time, my oldest and my youngest. I say, I know you love me, but I want you to love God more than you love me. Come on, because I may not always be here. Come on. And my two oldest, they live on their own now. So I'm not even in their home. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. But all that I had put inside of them, oh, it's in them now. It's in them. Amen. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he or she is old, they will not depart from the way. Come on. Amen. So we have to cover our children. Listen, even if they're out there, you got to pray them back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't give up on your children. Who am I encouraging tonight? We're going to stay here for 30 more seconds. Don't give up on your children. Hallelujah. God is able. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And don't let the enemy have them. Glory to God. If you got to fast for your children, fast. If you got to pray, listen, pray. Hallelujah. Do what's needed to be done. And then for your children, even if they're grown. Amen. Reach out to them. Tell them you love them. Listen, find out if they need anything. Who am I talking to tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find out if your children need anything. Because guess what? If they need something, they're going to go out there to the world and get it. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Mm-hmm. They'll go out there in the world and get it. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like they can't get it anywhere else. And that's how they get in trouble. Amen. But we're going to cover our children, right? In the blood of Jesus, we're going to cover our children in prayer. Hallelujah. And God, yes, Lord, I hear you. He has commissioned every parent, amen, to be over that child. So what that means is God has given us our children. Listen, God has given you your children. So you are required not just to give birth to them, but you are required to instill God in them. Ah, speak Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are required as parents to instill God in our children. It's not the pastor's job. <laughs> yes, the pastor prays for you and prays for your children, but it's your job. Come on. Hallelujah. You're the elder in the house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you have dominion and God has given you dominion over your children. Okay. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. It's a, it's 1241. We've been on here a long time. Okay. I got to give y'all the word. Amen. I got to obey God because I don't know what he got for me. Amen. Listen, I, hi, Abashe. glory to God. See, Sister Paula, I learned to obey him. Listen, it's late and I got to put together these ministry bags for the conference. I got a lot to do, but I heard the Lord. He said, come on with this message and release this word. So, you know, I don't know what he got for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But whatever the Lord has for me, I'm going to get it. I've learned to obey him. Hallelujah. That's one thing I've learned. Come on, vessels of the Lord. You got to obey God. Hallelujah. Some of you are still here because you're like, Lord, I need this word. I need this word. So let's continue. Let's continue. Amen. And be not conformed to what? This world. All right. Somebody shout, this world don't owe me nothing. This world can't offer me nothing. Come on. Say that out of your mouth. Glory to God. This world owes me nothing. This world can't teach me anything. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm in this world, but not of this world. Come on. Who am I helping tonight? Come on. We're in this world, but we are not of this world. Come on. Come on. Say it out of your mouth tonight. Say it out of your mouth. Say it out of your mouth. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Come on. Hallelujah. We're in it, but we're not of it. Come on. Hallelujah. We represent the kingdom of God. Come on. We don't represent the kingdom of darkness. And that's what the world is. The world is the kingdom of darkness. Get it in your spirit tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. This world is the kingdom of darkness and Satan is over this world. Come on. Satan is over the kingdom of darkness. Come on. And so God is saying we are not to conform to the world. But we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What does that mean? Okay, let's go back. You know, in the beginning, God said that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, right? 
So since we were born in sin, y'all stay with me for about seven more minutes, okay? We were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And in our mother's belly, we were conceived. Sin was in, was in us when we were in our mother's belly, right? So we were born into this world in sin. That's why God said, and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me help about 25 of you that are saved, but your mind has not been renewed. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me just help you through the spirit of God tonight, all right? You are saved, but your mind has not been renewed. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, okay? Glory to God, it's not your fault. Now it's time for you to hear the word of God, learn the word of God, and start walking in the word of God. Amen? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody shout that's revelation, okay? Come on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on. So that's how our mind is renewed. Catch this revelation. Okay. You got that sister Tessa. I see you hitting the hearts. So by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when you know to do right and your mind is being transformed, God is renewing your mind. Now you have to prove something. See, he says, prove what is that good and acceptable, right? And perfect will of God, right? So that means we have a job. We have a duty. There's something that we must do when God renews this thing called the mind. Okay. Listen, God had to renew my mind. I couldn't teach this word like this until God renewed my mind. Amen. He wouldn't give me revelation unless I submitted to him. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. So there are levels to this, right? So the more you submit, I want to help somebody. The more you submit to God, the more he can trust you. I want you to put that in your back pocket tonight. Okay. The more that you submit yourself to God, the more he can trust you. You got that? So he can trust you with what? With his word, with his anointing with his gifts. Come on. See, because a lot of us have gifts. We have an anointing, but we're not giving it over to God. We're using it to glorify ourselves. Come on. And God says, no, don't do that. See, he said, no flesh shall glory in his sight. Y'all catching his word tonight. <laughs> Amen. So this is how we are not conformed to the world because the world is full of flesh. Y'all see the two? You, you see how the Lord is breaking it down? He said, don't conform to the world, which is full of flesh. He said, but be, re be renewed. Amen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You caught that, right? See, when our mind is renewed, we walk in the spirit. Come on. But if our mind has not been renewed, we stay in the flesh. All right. Somebody shout, Lord, renew my mind tonight. Lord, renew my mind tonight. Mm -hmm. Lord, transform my mind. Renew my mind. Amen. Because as he renews your mind, guess what he's going to do? He's going to renew your spirit. Amen. And you're going to be that new creature in Christ. Glory to God. Somebody shout, renew my mind, Lord. This is for somebody tonight. Just say it out of your mouth. Amen. God's going to honor your words tonight. Hallelujah. He's going to honor your words. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. It says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. All right. And I'm, that's the NIV version. So the one who doesn't give up, that's the one who's going to be saved. All right. So we have a race that we are running and I want you to be encouraged because somebody may say, why do I need to stay focused? Somebody may say, why do I, why do I even need to call on God? You know, why do I have to remain faithful to him? Because there's a race that you are running. Amen. Come on. See, we are living to live again. Come on. We are living to live again. So your life is not meaningless. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Now, the way that you live is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity. That's why right, Carmela, she says, I'm not giving up. Stay right there. Amen. Stay right there. Hallelujah. Stay right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, amen. The word of God is what's sharpening some of you, what's strengthening some of you on tonight. So Matthew 24 and 13 says, but the one who endures, the one who stays focused 
on God to the end is the one that's going to be saved. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. I know it's a lot of word, but somebody needs it tonight. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. It says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These are the scriptures that God gave me for this message tonight. And that's Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Why does God say, do not be overcome by evil? Don't let evil overtake you. That's what that means. When evilness is around you, when evil is present, when the enemy is present, don't let it overtake you. Don't even partake of the evilness, right? God says, but overcome evil with good. So every time we do good, we overpower evil. Come on. Every time we do good, we overpower evil. Y'all catching this word tonight? Hit those hearts for Jesus. Come on. Hit those hearts for the Lord. Talk back to me tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. So every time evil is present, every time darkness is present, you show the light. Come on. You show the light of God. Come on. Anytime somebody cursing at you and you could curse back at them, you just say some nice good words. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Don't give them your, your choice words. Don't say back to them what you want to say. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. But you overcome that evil with good. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Come on. This is a good teaching tonight, right? So 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 talks about the natural versus the spirit. Let's turn there. I got a few more scriptures for you all tonight. And those on the prayer line, stay on the prayer line, okay? We're going to exit in just a minute. I have an announcement I need to make. Amen. I have an announcement I need to make on the prayer line. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. All right. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. And what does it say? It reads, but the natural man, and this is first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. All right. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him. Uh Oh, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All right. So this is to help some of you about the natural and the spiritual. Listen to this. The natural man or woman receiveth not the spiritual things of God. Why? Because they're in the natural, right? Natural is our flesh, right? And they are foolishness to him or her. So have you ever been talking to somebody about God? You try to explain something to them about God and they like, mm -mm, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't believe that, you know, and this is how you have many religions, different religions, right? Different religions spring up and they'll say, no, we don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We don't believe that he's coming back. We don't believe that he walked the earth. We don't believe that he performed miracles. We don't believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. You have a lot of people that say that because they don't have spiritual discernment. They read this word or read scripture, but there's no spiritual knowledge. There's no, there's no interpretation. There's no revelation, right? So they just don't understand. Now, and that may be for somebody else tonight. You know, you, you may say, I read the word, but I don't fully understand it. That's because you may look at it in the natural and not the spirit. All right. That's why you need a teacher. All right. To teach you the word of God. Amen. It's very important. And your pastor may be your teacher. Amen. Any spiritual leader in the body of Christ can be your teacher. Amen. If God has graced them with an anointing to teach. So this is why many of you need a teacher. Okay. Stop saying you don't need a pastor. Stop saying you don't need nobody to teach you the word of God. Because a lot of times people read the word, but have no knowledge of what they're reading. Or they might quote a scripture and have no knowledge of the scripture that they're quoting. They're just saying it. Okay. This is why we need a teacher. Who is the greatest teacher? Jesus. But Jesus has sent teachers in the earth. According to Ephesians chapter four, verse 11, right? Where the Bible says, and he has sent some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, and some evangelists 
for the work of the kingdom, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. That's the purpose why he sent the, his apostles, his pastors, his prophets, his teachers, and his evangelists. It's for the edifying. Somebody shout edify me, Lord. Come on. We have to get to a place in the body of Christ where we ask God for more. More of his word. More of his teachings. More of his spirit. Come on. The things will come. Let, let me help you. The house will come. The car will come. If you want to be married, the, the marriage will come. If you need, you want to have a baby and you're married, the babies will come. But you have to seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. The Bible says, and all these things will be added unto us. That's Matthew 6 and 33. One of my favorite scriptures. Amen. Matthew 6 and 33. Amen. So we thank God for the word thus far tonight. Let me give you all just a few more scriptures. Amen. Because some of you need a teacher. It's okay. It's okay. Amen. To have a teacher. Don't, you know, don't feel like you, you don't need somebody to help you. Or you don't need somebody to teach you the word of God. I had three teachers in my life. I, I tell you all, I had three dynamic pastors, three. Awesome. And if I, if, if God told me to go back to their ministry and sit under them, I would. If the Lord was to tell me right now to go back and sit under their ministry, I would do so because I love them just that much. Amen. And the anointing and the oil that rests on their life is, is priceless, you know. And so I needed um, teachers in my life. I needed pastors and prophets. Amen. Who could cultivate my gifts. Glory to God. But I had to sit humble, though. I couldn't be puffed up with pride. I couldn't, you know, think that I know everything. I had to I had to sit. Amen. And when I thought I was ready, Sister Maisha, they told me, you're not ready yet. You're not ready. This was years ago, over 15 years ago, 17 years ago, 18 years ago. They told me, you're not ready. You're not ready. And I listen. I listen. Amen. So somebody shout, Lord, give me a teacher. Give me a pastor that can teach me the word. Come on. Amen. First Peter chapter five. Mm -hmm. I know you did, Sister Maisha. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. All right. It says, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil is walking like a roaring lion, mm -hmm, seeking whom he may devour. Okay. So he says, be sober minded, be watchful. Watchful also means focused. Okay. That's right. So we're going to be what? We're going to remain focused. We're going to stay focused. Because the enemy is walking this earth. The Bible says like a roaring lion. Amen. He's not a roaring lion. Some people say that. The enemy is a roaring lion. No. The Bible says he's your adversary. All right. That's right, Sister Rhonda. That's right. John 10 and 10. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your adversary. We have an adversary. Come on. All 40 people on Facebook. Click, click, um, click that share button one more time. You and I have an adversary. Your adversary, the devil. Who is he? The devil. Come on, Instagram Live. Y'all not talking back to me. Y'all just looking at me. Come on, talk back to me tonight. Hit some hearts. <laughs> Wave your hand. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm so filled up tonight. I don't know what God going to do this weekend, y'all. Listen. <laughs> I feel like it's an exuberant blessing on the way. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Let me bring it on in because I feel it. Okay. Whew, hallelujah. Your adversary, the devil, is like, he's walking this earth like a royal lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay. He wants to devour you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. Thank you all for the hearts on Instagram live. At least I know y'all there with me. <laughs> all right. Let's read Colossians chapter three, verse two, Colossians chapter three, verse two. All right. Come on. 40 of you, all 40 of you on Facebook, click that share button one more time. You said, pastor, I share five times. How many more times do you want me to share? Share it again. All right. Put it in somebody's messenger. Amen. Colossians chapter three, verse two. All right. What does it say? And this is the NIV. It says, set your mind on things above. Come on. Right. Not on things of the earth. All right. It says, set your mind on things that are above. Now, let's be honest. Let's be real. If you're in a storm, it's going to be kind of hard for you to think about spiritual things. Come on. 
if you're in a situation where your back is up against the wall, it's going to be kind of hard, right? Just a little bit for you to really think on things that are above, right? Come on. You don't have no food. You don't have no shelter. You may even uh, be facing being homeless. You know, you may have lost your job. Come on. Um, you know, what, at last month you were doing good. Now this month you're not doing good. You know, something that came in your life where it done turned everything upside down. And God is saying in Colossians chapter three, verse two, he said, listen, I need you to set your mind. Now, set your mind. Listen to this. When we hear that, some of you might think, I'm just going to put my mind on God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. When you set something, you put it in motion. That's like when you set your alarm. If I set my alarm for 7 a.m., that means I took the time beforehand. Catch this revelation. I took the time beforehand to set the time. Because I wanted to wake up at 7 a.m. Right? So when God says, set your mind. What he's saying is, I need you to think on things that you were thinking on before. Before the storm. Before the test. Before the issue. Before the, 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 the crisis. Whatever happened in your life. And, and even as God says in his word, he says, think on these things. He says in Philippians. Think on things that are lovely. Things are of a good report. He says, if there be any praise, somebody shout if, <laughs> hallelujah. If there be any praise, glory to God. If there be any virtue, he says, think on these things. This is what I need you to think on. Hallelujah. And so God is saying, set your mind on things above. Come on. Come on, sister Katrina. He says, set your mind on things above. Hallelujah. The things of the heavens, things that are heavenly, things that are, 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 are all about God, things that are holy. Hallelujah. Things that are righteous. Ha, ah, glory to God. He says, set your mind on these things. Hallelujah. He says, not on things of the earth. All right. So the title of the message today, those of you that are just joining, God is saying, stay focused and remain faithful to God. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10 in closing. I have two scriptures. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's go to, yeah, let's go to Isaiah 41 and 10. And then we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. And then we're going to be through, all right? Those of you on the prayer line, stay right there. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10. Glory to God. Tonight has been awesome. Tonight has been awesome. I feel a mighty release for many of you tonight. Amen. I feel strength, the strength of God for many of you tonight. Some of you, your life will never be the same. Some of you looking and saying, who is this woman? I don't even know who she is. <laughs> Listen, I love you with the love of Jesus. Glory to God. I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I just welcome you to come on back anytime that I'm on. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because listen, when we make it to glory, Brother Chris Smith, listen, we're going to be rejoicing in heaven. Hallelujah. When we make it in heaven, y'all, listen, y'all not talking back to me. Glory to God. Listen, we're going to be family for real, for real. <laughs> Amen. We're not going to be in these mortal bodies, the Bible say. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. God's going to give us a new body. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. This, this body that corrupts, this body that gets old, you know, this body that got aches and pains and all of that. Mm -mm. We're not going to have that. Mm-mm. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm excited. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, how can I say that I love God whom I've never seen? Amen. And cannot tell my brother and sister that I love you. I love you in Jesus name. And I mean it. Amen. Glory to God. We are family. Somebody shout. We are family. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God. All right. Isaiah 41. Amen. Listen, before this life is over, join the ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, before 2021 is over, some of y'all need to join this ministry. Amen. Get under covering. Listen, listen, listen. Hallelujah. Come on out the rally and fellowship with us. Come on. Get your healing. Get your deliverance. Amen. So that you can walk in your purpose. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. All right. Okay. So we have, yes, Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, fear not. Somebody shout, fear not. That's right. That's right. We family, y'all. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Mm-hmm. Come on. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yes, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. 
Amen. This is an encouraging word from God to each and every one of you. He says, fear not. Amen. As you're staying focused, fear not. As you're looking unto God, fear not. Amen. What the enemy can do to you. The Bible says there are more that are for us than those who are against us. Come on. As you're staying focused on God, you're going to face some enemies. You're going to face some accusers. You're going to have people that just do not like you. And it comes with the territory. Come on. It comes with the territory, right? But God is saying, fear not, for I am with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Be not dismayed. Let me tell you all what dismayed means. Oh, God had me. He had me in the word, y'all. The Lord had me deep in this word. Okay, dismayed means, when God says, be not dismayed, listen to this. It means, do not be distressed. It also means, do not be disappointed. Mm. Do not even be worried. Oh, this is good. He says, and don't even be shocked. Woo. My God, my God. The definition for dismay. He says, don't even be shocked by your storm. Don't even be shocked by your accusers. Don't be disappointed either when things don't go your way. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You catching that woman of God, Tamara? Listen, don't even be worried about it. Mm. And don't be distressed. Amen. Somebody shout, I will not be dismayed. Hallelujah. Because God is with me. And he will what? Strengthen us. He will help us. Come on. He will uphold you. Ha! Ah, glory to God. God is the only one that can lift you up. Hallelujah. In times when you're torn down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is the one who lifts us up. Speak Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When we are torn down, he says, and I will uphold you with my right hand. Oh, this is good. See, the right hand represents authority. Ah, glory to God. See, anytime God talks about the right hand or even the right leg, glory to God. Hallelujah. Anything that's on the right side, catch this revelation, means authority. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The City Purpose Church. Glory to God. Amen. Here in Raleigh. That's your brother. Amen. The Pastor Parker. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. So God says, yes, you caught that. You caught that on Instagram, right? So the right hand, listen to this. He says, I will uphold you with my right hand, with my hand of authority. Catch this real quick. Come on, be strengthened tonight. Be strengthened tonight. He says, I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. This is the word of God. He's saying with his righteousness. Mm, glory to God. See, our righteousness is as of filthy rags, as we know, right? But the righteousness of God will stand. Oh, this is good tonight. Hallelujah. He says, I will uphold you with my righteousness. Mm, glory to God with my hand of righteousness, says the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to read, yes, God, I hear you. Hallelujah. He says, be encouraged tonight. The Lord says, be encouraged, be encouraged. I just heard that. The Lord said for me to tell every person, even on our prayer line tonight, all eight callers, I believe we have eight now. The Lord says, be encouraged. Amen. Be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged tonight. Sometimes you just need to hear that. Be encouraged. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. We're going to end with Matthew chapter six, verse 24. That's right, D'Angelo, is it? D'Angelo, God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Amen. Minister Tanya, I believe you're still on the live. Amen. I'm going to ask you um, if you could get ready to give the announcements. Just a brief a brief. Um, a brief announcement. Amen. Just give the announcements on the prayer line tonight. If you could just get the announcements together, Minister, Ta Minister Tanya, just the short announcements, those that need to be um, spoken on the prayer line. And I'm going to give the other announcement that I have to give. Amen. That'll help me out tonight. Amen. Minister Tanya, if you can get ready to give the announcements on the prayer line. Okay. They go to hearts. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter six, verse 24. And this is Jesus speaking. What does he say? Amen. He says, no man can serve two masters. We talking about being focused, right? He says, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. Mm. 
or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Listen to this. You cannot serve God and mammon. Do you all know what mammon is? Does anybody know what mammon is? Come on, where my Bible scholars at tonight? Come on, where my studiers, those of you that study the word of God. Come on, those of you that have concordances and things like that. I don't want you to look it up real quick. I just want somebody who really knows it. Do you know what mammon is? All right. It's okay. It's okay. Let me tell you what mammon is. Mammon is money. Mammon is money. God said, thank you, Sister Carol. There it is. I knew somebody knew. Amen. So we can serve God and money. I'm going to go real deep with this real quick. Because somebody tonight, I'm going to be on your street. Holy Ghost going to say what needs to be said. And we're going to leave it like that. Okay. So many people are serving money. And they don't even know it. How can you serve money? The fact that you would do anything for money. Come on. The fact. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on somebody's street. I know. I know. I know. Listen, it's okay. It's okay. If you, if you find yourself saying, ouch, after you say, ouch, and you can't say amen, just say, ouch, and then say, Lord, fix it. Lord, fix it. God does not want us to love money over him. He wants us to love him. And then he will give us money. Okay. Listen, money is nothing to God. <laughs> Let me help somebody tonight. Money is nothing. Listen, so many people, they would do anything for money. Come on. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? Y'all know I'm telling the truth tonight. All in the word. Right? Listen, the love of money is the root of Somebody need to get delivered. The Lord said he's going to deliver somebody tonight. Listen, the love of money, the fact that you got to have it all the time, the fact that it got to come from this place and got to come from that place. And if you don't get it from here, you're going to have an attitude. If you don't get it from there, you're going to have an attitude. If this don't happen and, ain't, and if this ain't right, then you're going to be upset. Come on. The Bible says the love of money. Is the root of all evil, not a little bit of evil, not some evil, right? But all evil. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Some people will work three jobs, not just to pay their bills now. Some people will work three jobs to have a whole lot of money. I've seen people work until they almost lost their life. Come on. To where they've almost died. And I'm like, well, when are you going to stop working all of them hours? Come on. You are literally killing yourself. Come on. And don't have no time for God. Come on. Hallelujah. It's a plan and a plot of the enemy. Come on. When you're trying to work so much and work so much. Now, check this out. Listen to this. Catch this revelation. For those that do that, if you notice, they don't have... Nothing. And when I say that, meaning if they only have material, material things, then they don't have any substance is what we talked about earlier. Right. Substance. Because when we have substance, we have what? Faith. Right. So those that chase money or love money or, you know, money is, or is in the forefront of their mind all the time. Then what happens is they're willing to do anything for it. Amen. This is how you get prostitution and, you know, and all of these other unclean spirits will start coming up or, you know, selling drugs, selling dope, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. People are willing to do anything to make money. So what did God say? He said, we cannot serve two masters, right? He says, you either love one or hate the other, right? He says, or else. You will hold to the one and despise the other. Come on. So what is Jesus saying in that? He's saying, get to the point to where you don't let it overpower you. Come on. Where you don't let money be your, your drive for what you do. Can I help the business owners tonight? Can I help the business owners? Amen. I'm a businesswoman. I have multiple businesses. Let me help the business owners. I'm going to tell you how your business is going to be blessed. Not by more money. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Because mm -mm. you can make more money this week and then have no money next week. <laughs> let, let, let me help the business owners, okay? Real quick. I've been in business many, many years, over 10 years, okay? The way to having an effective business and keeping the revenue going is relationship. It's relationship. It's relationship. <laughs> Somebody may say, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's relationship. You have to build relationship and a rapport. A rapport. Yeah, rapport. <laughs> it's late, y'all. You have to build relationship and a rapport with your customers. You have to learn what people like. And you have to be willing, listen to this, to give sometimes, even when nothing is coming back. All right? That's how you have a successful business. Because in business, it's going to rise and fall. But the way that, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, somebody caught that. I felt the release right there. The way that you, yeah, it's relationship. It's relationship. You build relationship. You learn to be honest. You have to be very integral. If you want a good business, you can't be lying and all of that stuff. Amen. And definitely put God in your business. You have to tithe off of your business. See, some people don't want to hear that. Amen. I've been tithing off of all three of my businesses for years. <laughs> years. Even if, listen, it's, listen, it's so blessed. My businesses are so blessed. Listen to this. If I don't even feel like working my business, I still got money coming in. All because I'm a tither. <laughs> Hallelujah. People will find me for my business. They'll say, Prophetess, are you still doing? I'm like, I tried to give it a break for two or three months. Come on. Money will find you. When you have relationship. Somebody catch this. Money will find you. It won't be an issue. It will not be an issue. Y'all listening to the Holy Ghost tonight? Glory to God. Listen, money will find you. Let me help the business owners. Money will find you when you build relationship and when you give good product, hallelujah, and you're honest and you have integrity, glory to God, and you tithe off of your business. You put God first. Amen. Somebody shout amen. This was such an awesome teaching tonight. Glory to God. Listen. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to sow tonight. Listen, somebody needs to plant tonight. Listen, this was a good word. Amen. If you are sowing tonight, I want you to hashtag this was a good word. Amen. Listen, get a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Get a seed of $20, $25, $30 seed. Listen, get a seed in the ground. Amen. Any amount that the Lord lays on your heart. Glory to God. But get a seed in the ground tonight. Amen. Bless this ministry. Why? Amen. Because God wants to really bless you. Amen. He has blessed you with the word tonight. God has blessed you with the anointing tonight. Amen. That has come to destroy yokes in your life. Amen. But also set you ablaze. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. The anointing has come tonight. Amen. To set many of you on fire. Hallelujah. Back on fire for God. Amen. And listen, that's priceless. Glory to God. When God sets us back ablaze and he puts us back on fire for him and our love for him is stronger. Glory to God. And, you know, uh, we're running after him again, you know, through this word. We're remaining focused. Glory to God. Listen, that's priceless. Amen. So we thank God for his word on tonight. Amen. And I thank God for each and every person that is going to sow a seed into this ministry tonight. Once again, amen. This is Prophetic Impact Prayer Word Ministry. I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood, and I'm getting ready to sign off. Listen, I'm still filled up, y'all, because I know God is getting ready to do something amazing um, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Glory to God. Listen. Hallelujah. Thank you, D'Angelo. Thank you all for those of you that are getting ready to sow into this awesome ministry. Glory to God. Amen. Sister Carol says she's going to sow for Carmela. Wow. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to pray over every seed in just a minute. Um, but I want to say to you all, people of God, don't allow distractions to stop you in this season. I preached it last week, but I feel led to say it again. Do not allow the distractions to hinder you. The distractions have come to stop you. They have come to slow you down. Glory to God. But don't allow the distractions to remain in your life. 
Glory to God. Listen, amen. We just came across seven. Seven. This is um July, the seventh month, right? Amen. July, the seventh month. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And yes, even on yesterday, as we have crossed over to the 22nd, amen, the 21st. Glory to God. So in the number 21, there are three sevens. All right. And God always moves in numbers. He has a book of numbers in his Bible. Amen. In the word of God. So let me just give you all the number seven. Seven is the number of completion. Amen. Seven is the number of completion. So in this month of July, God is completing a lot of things. Amen. I can truly testify here in our ministry. Amen. With some of our members and covenant partners that God is completing some things that he said he was going to do here in this ministry. Amen. The testimonies are coming forth. Testimony after testimony. Even Sister Paula. Amen. Glory to God has a beautiful testimony of how God has has. Um, um, did some things in her life again. Glory to God. You know that word re means to do over. Hallelujah. Thank you, um, Sister Carol. I'm going to pray over every seed in just a minute. So we thank God for the testimonies. Amen. We thank God for the, the completion. Amen. The number seven. So get all that you need, God, that get all that you need from God in the month of July. All right. In this month, don't let this month pass you by without allowing God to complete some things, to finalize some things. Listen, and if you need a door closed, listen to this. If you need God to shut a door in your life, ask him to shut that door and ask him to open up a new one. Amen. Glory to God. Because listen, the month of August is going to be, it's going to be amazing. Listen, the month of August, new beginnings. Woo, hallelujah. So many things are going to birth forth in the spirit for the body of Christ in the month of August. My God. So you want God, you want God to close those doors that need to be closed. Thank you, Vandis Arlene. I'm going to pray over every seed in a minute. Amen. You want God to close those doors. Whatever you need God to shut in your life. Hallelujah. That has caused you to feel unworthy. Glory to God. Because that's what I hear the Lord saying. Some of you with some things in your life that have caused you to feel unworthy of your assignment in the kingdom. Glory to God. You got to cut it at the root. Hallelujah. You got to let God complete it, finalize it, and let it be done. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you that are called to the kingdom to minister God's word, listen to this. Don't let nobody stop you. Listen, and I mean nobody. Don't let nobody hinder you. Mm -mm. If you got to walk alone for a season, you walk alone. But don't let nobody stop you from your kingdom assignment. Hear me and hear me very well and very clear. You have to answer to God on the day of judgment. And I'm telling you, the people that's in your ear will not be standing next to you. They are not going to be judged with you. You are going to be judged by God, by yourself. All right. So make God proud. Amen. And my prayer for you is that you hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> You've been faithful over a few things. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, with hands lifted in the air. We glorify you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory that is due unto your name, Father. Thank you for this word tonight. Thank you for the moving of your spirit. Thank you for this here, your people, Lord God, on Instagram and even on Facebook and on our prayer line, our ministry call tonight, God. We thank you for each and every soul that has partake of your word tonight, that has heard you, hallelujah, on tonight, Lord God. We thank you. Father, that your word will not return back void and it will accomplish what it was sent out to do. Father, we thank you that we will remain focused. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And God, we will we will remain faithful unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word. Oh, God, strengthen the body of Christ. I pray 
In the name of Jesus, strengthen this ministry, I pray. Strengthen every member, every covenant partner of this ministry, Father, and those that are connected even now. Oh, God, send your strength in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Strengthen the body of Christ, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I, yes, Lord, I pray over every seed that has been sown into this ministry tonight. I thank you for multiplication of every seed, Lord God. I thank you for stretching every seed. I thank you even for expansion for those who have sown into this word, sown into your anointing tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to remain focused. Yes, God. And they're going to remain faithful unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And those who need healing, they will be healed. Those who need deliverance, they will be delivered. And those who need to be set free will be set free. In Jesus' mighty name. And I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus and I count it done. And in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Listen, blessings each and every one of you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Share this broadcast before you exit on Facebook. And those of you on Instagram Live, share with somebody on tonight. Amen. Share with your followers in Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful night, everyone. God bless you all. And shalom. Glory to God. Blessings. Those of you that want to join our prayer line, 712-775-7031. Answers code 222-953-820-POUND. Jump on the line right now. We are on the call live. God bless you all. We love you. Shalom.